Today we're going to talk about the truths behind cryotherapy and some of the myths you might be hearing in the news or in social media. Cryotherapy, by definition, is the withdrawal of heat from the body because heat leaves the body as opposed to the cold entering your body. A majority of the research on cryotherapy and the impact it has specifically on inflammation and metabolism is research done in animal models, which is wonderful because we're able to elucidate a lot of data from those animal models. But unfortunately, some of that doesn't directly translate into humans. The way cryotherapy works is it withdraws heat from the body, starting at the most superficial layer. So first at your skin, then depending on your skin fold thickness, your body fat percentage has to penetrate through that. Then it goes into your superficial muscle tissues. And only then, if it's been applied for long enough or if it's cold enough, will it penetrate your deep tissue. Secondarily, the effect of cryotherapy is based on vasoconstriction, uh, which means that you have some impact on your heart rate. Um, it will initially boost your heart rate and then it will decrease your heart rate over time. Individuals who don't have any pre-existing medical conditions, you should go ahead and you should try to use cryotherapy when you feel like you want to recover from exercise or if you need to cool off, if you have gone on a long run, or if you are training for something where you feel like you're sore after you're exercising, you can go ahead and you can take a cold shower, you can put some ice cubes in your bathtub and sit in that for approximately 15 to 30 minutes. The threshold though is once you start shivering is your body telling you to stop the cryotherapy. Cryotherapy through ice baths specifically has shown to have a detrimental effect on strength gains and muscle mass. So if you're trying to get stronger, maybe avoid the use of cryotherapy. But if you're trying to recover from soreness from like a soccer game or you've gone skiing and you're sore and you still wanna ski the next day, then of course you can use cryotherapy because at that stage you're not focusing on building that muscle mass. The bottom line is that cryotherapy recently is, in my opinion, a controversial topic because it's become so black and white, but it really doesn't have to be that way you can understand the science behind when to use cryotherapy, which is if you are doing a lot of exercise in a short period of time and you know you're gonna feel sore and you don't wanna feel sore, use cryotherapy, great for recovery. But conversely, the science also shows that it's bad for building muscle mass or strength gains, in which case, at that point, if that's your focus, just avoid using cryotherapy. The evidence doesn't necessarily support that cryotherapy directly has any cognitive benefits per se, but because of its mechanism of action on vasoconstriction, we do know that it does have benefits on regulating your heart rate, especially if you're an overtrained athlete.